Welcome to Dr. C's Excellent Adventures. Today we're exploring the geology of Rapa Nui. Rapa Nui is famous for its great stone statues, but it's also a fantastic place to have a close look at the diverse products of hotspot volcanism within a relatively small area. If you get the chance to travel to Rapa Nui, be sure to bring along a copy of Vizzoli and Aquacella's 2009 GSA Bulletin paper. It's the primary source for the information in this video. Easter Island is famously isolated within the broad expanse of the Pacific Ocean. If it is indeed the product of hotspot volcanism like the Hawaiian Islands, then an obvious question is, where are the rest of the volcanoes? It turns out that there are a bunch of volcanoes in the Easter hotspot chain, but most of them never grew large enough to break above sea level. The Nazca Plate is moving very rapidly here, and for some reason the Easter hotspot is only pumping out less than one hundredth as much magma over time as the Hawaiian hotspot. Rapa Nui is made up of the tops of three large shield volcanoes which are sitting on the floor of the Pacific Ocean. Shield volcanoes are built up by thousands of individual eruptions of fluid basaltic lava that layer by layer builds up a large edifice with relatively gently sloping flanks. Although the basalts on Rapa Nui are hundreds of thousands of years old, there are places where you can still see the ropey pahoehoe surface texture produced by the fluid flow of these red-hot lavas. Rano Kao is a particularly nice example of a shield volcano. On the eastern flank, wave erosion has cut back the shield to expose dozens of the gently sloping lava flows that built this gigantic edifice. At the summit, you can see a textbook example of a caldera, the bowl-shaped depression formed when the top of a volcano collapses into the void left underground after a large eruption drains a magma chamber. By about 400,000 years ago, basaltic eruptions ended on Rano Kao, suggesting that it was cut off from the hot spot. The remaining magma gradually changed in chemical composition due to fractional crystallization, and about 350,000 years ago, the eruption of a benmorite lava evacuated part of the magma chamber and caused the caldera collapse. Benmorite is higher in sodium and silica than basalt, and on Rapa Nui is easily identified by its large white plagioclase crystals. Taravaca, the largest of the three shield volcanoes, is famous for its extensive network of lava tubes. When lava flows through a depression, it cools fastest at the surface, forming a solid roof over the hot material below. As the eruption wanes and the lava drains away, it leaves an empty tube below ground. In addition to the three big shield volcanoes, there are numerous smaller volcanic landforms on Rapa Nui. There are cinder cones and small volcanic domes which erupted along fracture zones which cut through the big volcanoes. Of these, by far the most interesting is Rano Raraku, an ancient tuff ring which served as the quarry stone for most of the island's moai. Tuff rings form when rising magma hits water. The resulting steam explosions blast the magma into tiny glassy fragments, which are incorporated into violent surges, which spread outward from the surface. Watch out for the shock, it's coming. Tuff rings like Rano Raraku thus have very large craters relative to their overall diameter, 
and layers on the inside of the crater that slope upward and outward. The outer walls are typically much steeper than those of cinder cones, as the tuff is wet when it's deposited. Many of the moai contain large angular blocks of older basalt, and this is also characteristic of tuff ring deposits. Unique features of Rano Raraku include an ancient sea cliff carved into its eastern flank and a fracture that runs right through the middle of the thing, dividing it into an orange and a gray half. As with any volcanic province, we have to ask, is there a chance of future volcanic eruptions on Rapa Nui? Though Rapa Nui was carried away from the Easter hotspot hundreds of thousands of years ago, there may still be small volumes of magma present capable of eruption, just as there are on the Hawaiian island of Maui. According to the Smithsonian's Global Volcanism website, the youngest lava flow on Rapa Nui may be less than 2,000 years old, so more eruptions in the future cannot be completely ruled out. If you're interested in geology and have the chance to visit Rapa Nui, make sure you book at least a four-night stay. I was only there for three nights and didn't have near enough time to see everything I wanted to. For lodging, I can definitely recommend the Explora Rapa Nui, which caters to the active traveler. My hearty thanks to Pepe, Alex, Luis, and the rest of the fantastic staff that allowed me to take maximum advantage of my short stay on the island. As always, Dr. C's Excellent Science Adventures are sponsored by Conqueror Bristle Worm Science and Nature themed gifts. Ready? Go. Okay. Welcome to Dr. C's Excellent Adventures. Today we're exploring the geology of Easter Island. Okay. Rapa Nui. Wait a minute, let's do that again. That's uh. the wrong name. What I know.